Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Weekly Money. Before I get into this week's content, whether you're already hauling loads, preparing to get started, or if you just discovered this hotshot trucking industry and you're still kicking tires, I've created a free seven-part video training for you, and in it I explain the behind the scenes of how this business works. You can download that for free on my website and start watching it right now. And for those of you wanting a full free month of DAT load board access, or if you're interested in using the same factoring company, free fuel card, or ELD companies that me and most of my drivers use, I'll explain how to sign up step-by-step at the end of this episode. Speaking of this episode, let's get moving. She ugly? Yes. Rusted out fenders, broken grill, you name it. The inside is, <laughs> wait till you see this. This is the best part. Ah, the inside is lovely, lovely. Isn't she lovely? Why don't you want to strap your kids in here with a baby seat? <laughs> so, uh, ah. This is an 07 Silverado. Listen, the best thing about this is that it's paying, uh, I think 220 bucks. I picked it up seven minutes away from where I just dropped off in Albany, New York. And I'm bringing this home for the weekend, it's Friday. And then Monday morning, this drops about 30 minutes or so from my house. So I'll be looking for the rest of the day today on the way home. Self-dispatching, baby, it's that self-dispatching life. Uh, looking to pick up something else that uh, that I can pick up after I drop this Monday. Always thinking in advance. Always thinking ahead. Got to keep it moving. Later, y'all. All right, nothing fancy. Uh, it takes up 19 feet of the deck. A smooth 350 bucks. Going an hour from here. Uh, there's a bunch of stuff where I'm headed, so... Uh, I have no issue grabbing something else to put on after this. Time, however, may be of the essence because it's 12.30. These guys just got off of lunch, so I was waiting a little bit for them to get off of lunch. I'm loaded. I'll tarp this in 20 minutes tops and drive my hour and then grab something there. I just hope that whatever I grab is able to load me by the time I get to where I'm going to drop this and unload this. So it's 12.30. I'll be out of here by 1.00. I'll get there by 2, be offloaded by hopefully 2.30, and by 3-ish, I can be to most places where I would pick up a return load. So let's see if all that if all that clockwork uh, works out. Man, thank goodness they just offloaded me because I almost got stuck with this one. I noticed when I was pulling in that it said they offload until 2. It's 2.25, and I, I, I totally didn't notice that until... I was pulling in here just now, so I thanked them both profusely, man. I was like, thank you for offloading me. It would have sucked to take this from New Hampshire to Connecticut and back up here just for a measly 350. So anyway, like I said, it's 2.30. I'm going to look for something else heading down my way and uh, make my home trip worth the while. So I didn't speed. I went the speed limit, but I chanced getting to a local co-part that was close to where I was uh, to see if they would allow me to get in. And I called, they said I could get in if I was, if I got there by 4.30, I got there at 4.24. But then I scanned the kiosk out front. Those of you that are moving cars know what I'm talking about. And the kiosk said, sorry, you're here too late and we can't load you. I don't take no easily. <laughs> so I went inside, prayed for some favor. Thank God for that. And they allowed me to uh, stay in the line. Uh, can I get loaded? And they said, yeah. Bam, paperwork. So needless to say, I'm about to drive down Zaya and uh, grab this vehicle. It's not huge, pays a buck 50, not a lot of money, but covers the fuel going home, or covers the fuel and I make a hundred bucks. Quick 150 bucks. Ah, by the time fuel is out of it, I'll keep at least a hundred, but I'm okay with it. Here we go. It's always about public safety, right? So whenever I pull off with a vehicle, I always uh, I always somewhat jam the brake going like two or three miles an hour to see how much roll the tires give me. This gave me a little bit more roll than I wanted. Uh, so I decided, you know what? Let me let me, let me me really get this down. Uh, so I chained this, this, uh, this little puppy. Chain is nice and tight, super tight. And all I did was basically go around the peg. Let me show you guys. You've probably seen this in my chaining videos, but here it is on a vehicle. I chained through here, went right through that bad boy, through the hitch. It's rusty, but it's on there. 
and then I just simply came out that way just brought my chain back out down right and then over I could have came up right here but I needed I needed space because these binders are once you on once you spread them you need space for them to spread and then grab as far as possible over there and as far as possible over here so what I do is I, I brought this chain farther away so that by grabbing here I could reach all the way as far as I could and that's the farthest thing I could grab if I would have brought it up here I guess I could have grabbed the chain right here and then put put this bind this end of the binder up here somewhere but that's just my own little thing I like to make a little triangle get it far away as possible and then do that so that's it this is all just slack if it does this in transit but I like things to be in one piece that's as always in the in position which is the way that's the position you're in to lock or to ratchet tight if i put it out it'll just undo itself and if i put it in the middle it's free spin it'll just undo itself so in is basically as locked as you can get it wrap that chain around that to further keep that together nice and neat and this is my fancy tarp job whenever you see that that's my get money tarp job that means that i was rushing too fast to get this money and had nothing faster to do than just throw a strap across this bad boy and that's all she wrote. Today is Tuesday, AKA my day off. I just booked a load for tomorrow. Actually, I booked two loads for tomorrow. Uh, one of them is picking up in Bethel, Connecticut, about an hour away from home. Uh, they start loading at seven. I'll be there for six, which means I have to leave here at five. That's a three and a half hour drive to the drop in New Hampshire. And then one of my brokers gave me a shout and asked me to pick something up in uh, Massachusetts about an hour away from that New Hampshire drop I'll be grabbing that and coming home with it and the next day Thursday I'll be dropping that off in New York about two hours away from home and that's a rich area for loads so I'll find something around there and I'll just keep ping ponging around remember uh, remember ricochet rabbit bing 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 ricochet rabbit maybe I'm showing my age but hey whatever good cartoon though these right here are my load for this morning uh, two refrigeration tanks quick 600 bucks I'm only gonna strap them on the edges and I asked the, the broker about that I always want to ask never be too proud to to ask questions about how it's what's the best way to secure a load obviously there's more strength more rigidity on the edges the middle these are hollow they're just refrigeration tanks going to a rental place so if I strap there in the middle it has to be really really light like almost hand tight only otherwise I'll crack it and uh, I'm in many businesses but Owning refrigeration equipment ain't one, <laughs> so I'll be careful with it. All right, so first things first, got to assess everything. My tarp is in a get money position, which means I was rushing to get money and I didn't have time to fold it last time. I'll fold it after this load because I need it for the next one. And it's easier to un unravel it when it's rolled. So that's that. Uh, I tried to throw this strap over and it got stuck. Good thing I have my trusty, uh, my trusty step stool. Love that. Uh, again, never be ashamed to ask what's the best way to, to strap this. The broker was like, strap it on both ends, it's stronger. I asked the guy the same thing. He said, don't go over that vent because you'll break it. So I said, what about if I strap in the front and the middle? He said, all right. I said, not, don't go too tight. He said, no, it's strong. So I'm not gonna, not gonna go for, you know, pull for dear life, but uh, I'll do enough to keep it snug. He did say that I could chain through here and I'm a fan of chaining, I really am. Uh, the only thing about chaining is it takes a long time and I'm kind of pressed for time today. Like I'm already an hour behind schedule. I wanted to be here at seven and it's eight. So I'm not going to take the time to chain. I'm just going to strap over both sides uh, and go from there. And you see the other strap I'm going to use is already prepped. Then I'm going to slide this one down, put it in through here so that it's not over this rub rail, because if it is, then it'll kind of cover the light. And somebody who's right here on the road won't probably won't be able to see that my flasher from getting over so so always walk around your load and make sure you know any damages right here you probably see there's a gouge slash crack i took a picture before i put the straps on so they don't think that my straps did that and then i noted it on the paperwork here gouge slash crack on that model number i got the model number from right there and it's on my paperwork so that's that and walking around, I was able to see that uh, 
my strap after I tighten it is way up here. That's not a good look. If that comes off, then I only have one strap on the road. So needless to say, I'm just gonna quickly adjust that and keep it moving. So I spent about a hundred bucks to get this here. Um, I just paid 600 to move it. And the next load uh, is 550 and that's taking me right home. It is 12.43 and I'm gonna get back on the road. I've never seen these get pulled off this way. Usually, they were forked on. Usually they're forked off. But this is cool. Okay, go ahead. So I'm underneath my trailer. This board, which is popping up on the deck side, I'm holding it down. So that. Right, I gotta get this jack out from underneath. Okay. So that the load can slide over the boards. So if you're hot shotting and want to haul cars, you may need these. Email me, I'll tell you where to find them and what they cost and all that kind of stuff. Or they'll be in the uh, in the upcoming uh, car video, car hauling video. My guy, Jason, you guys know the building, obviously. You know the red building. Uh, we both come here all the time. He's one of the gentlemen I used to dispatch for, and now he's a car hauling pro. <laughs> Thanks to this guy. <laughs> so, uh, but of course he does freight. He still has his 32 foot. Um, so it just so happened that we both ended up at the same place at the same time picking up loads. So I was like, we gotta grab a video. Um, so yeah, okay. cool, cool man. awesome. So um, we both have the same, pretty much the same kind of load. He already tarped his. Um, his is going to Connecticut. Mine is going to New York. So I'm gonna tarp this, sleep with it, and then tomorrow I'll drop it off. It is almost 11 in the morning. I've never started my day this late, but uh, I'm doing my pre-trip. Uh, my little kid had his first dentist appointment this morning and listen, the money's important, but not missing out on those moments means a lot more to me. So nonetheless, uh, I just did my pre-trip and doing my walk around with y'all and uh, I got to hit the road. I got ground to cover. Headed to Poughkeepsie, New York. I do not have a return load. So this is going to be a Georgia the Jungle slash Tarzan kind of day where I'm on a vine with that load. That's my vine. And I got to release it at some point and I need another one to grab onto to continue. Vine, AKA load, you get my drift. And the search begins. Folks, the verdict is in. Size does matter. <laughs> I have my tarp right here uh, and I got my vehicles on it. I'm not concerned about that. They're on there and I'll come back to that in a second and these are on there so i'm good there but i'd rather have that a little bit more on than just that and the reason why i can't go much forward is because i don't want to put that ball into that honda pilot so no big deal what i'm gonna do is take this tarp out throw it in the bed of my truck and uh that way i'll have another foot and a half two feet and then it'll be no issue at all uh the other thing is uh this is a 32 foot trailer if i had a 30 I'd probably be in the same situation on the back end where the tires would be right on the edge. So happy that I got those extra two feet on this trailer. They're hard to find, but if you find one, it, those, every, every bit of the length counts. So, uh, you know, do with that what you will. First and foremost, my website. Whether you're kicking tires and just wanna know how the business works, or if you just want hardcore numbers on what your expenses would really be and how much money you can really make in this industry, there's a free course there for you or if you're at the stage where you're buying equipment or just trying to figure out what paperwork you need to start your new company properly, I got you covered. If you're anything like me and you need to know what to expect one step down the road before you even take that first step, I totally understand. And I've already put together an in-depth, super detailed course that's waiting for you there too. Go to my website, hotshottraining.com. There's several other free videos there for you as well. But listen, I'm not famous yet, so you can't just Google hotshot training and have me be the first thing in your search results. So go to your address bar, not the search bar, go to the address bar and put in hotshottraining.com there and it'll take you straight to the website. Once you're there, you'll still be able to sign 
sign up for 30 days of free DAT load board access. It's a great way to see what loads are paying and what's moving around you, even before you buy a truck and a trailer. You can also sign up for the Keep Truck and ELD services that I've used from day one, and you'll also get a $100 Visa gift card in the process, but only if you use the links on the site. But what I'm most excited about is that my Money, Money, Money course is available to you for free, as I like to say, free 99, instead of the $600 retail price on the website. I'll explain what's in the course and also walk you through the couple steps to sign up with Taz Factoring for factoring services and get the $600 course for free. Now let's face it, you're gonna sign up with a factoring company anyway in order to turn your delivered loads into cash. So you might as well A, sign up with one that somebody like me is vouching for, and B, you might as well get a $600 bonus out of the deal that's gonna help you make money rather than bang your head against the wall for the next three months or six months or even save you from going out of business. Anyway, hotshottraining.com, check it out. There's a ton of stuff there for you and it looks really damn good too.